Good morning, everybody. This is Professor Bruce Hartpence coming to you from the networking labs at RIT with another networking video for you. Uh, remember that we're working through Chapter 3 in the Packet Guide to Routing and Switching, and our topic is Spanning Tree. So if you missed the previous video, that was the basics of Spanning Tree, and in this video, as promised, I'm going to be working through an example. So without further delay, here we go. All right, so I'm going to work through an example that's actually in right out of the book. So this is the topology if you're reading through that particular chapter. And we have a three switch or three bridge topology, and the MAC addresses are indicated on there. Now remember that spanning tree is a comparison algorithm. So that's what I'm going to be working through. We're going to be looking at actual frames caught on this particular network uh, with this MAC, these MAC addresses right in those BPDUs or bridge protocol data units. So here we go. So here's our first step. And really all we're doing is powering up that switch number one. And what that means is that there's nobody else on the network. And so if you look at the ports that are connected, and we'll pretend that the ports are live here. Without the other switches, they wouldn't actually be. But if you look at the ports that would be live, this is the collection or the pair of BPDUs that would be coming out of them. All right. So right now, switch one is the only one powered up. It doesn't hear about the other switches, so it believes that it is the root of the spanning tree. So let's take a little closer look at these BPDUs. From the point of the arrows here, everything is going to be exactly the same. Why? Because this is the only bridge out there. So it's not only the root, but it's also the transmitting bridge. Now the other dead giveaway that we've got a root here is that the path cost coming from both of these BPDUs is a zero. And that means that these BPDUs came directly from the root. So the only difference in these BPDUs, at least as far as the spanning tree fields are concerned, is that they came from two different ports. And so the circled values, 8001 and 8003 here, are the only two differences. And remember that that 8001 and 8003, that's the combination of the port priority base 10 numbers 128, 80, and hex, and the port number 01 and 03. So now we power up switch number 2, and immediately stuff starts to happen. Because switch number 2 sees the BPDUs coming from switch number 1 and says, hey, listen, I, I see that you think you're the root, but I'm a better root. And the reason that it's a better root is because it has a lower bridge ID. So when comparing the incoming root ID in the BPDUs, switch 2, when it combines the switch priority of 8001, now that's 32769 in base 10 because it's a, a bridge priority, uh, and the MAC address, it sees that it's got a lower number. And so it immediately decides that it's going to be the root. So the top part of this frame that we're seeing here is actually the indication that a topology change or at least a new route is out there. And we're also seeing the new BPDU that would come from the switch advertising the new route. So we've got here that this came from a particular switch, but the route ID is now different. We also see the path cost going up here. It's a path cost of 19. So this is actually a BPDU uh, from switch 1 indicating that switch 2 is now the route. So I just wanted to pop back to our topology here for a second. This is, uh, you know, we powered up switch number one, we've powered up switch number two, and so the uh, the new route here is switch number two, and BPDUs are coming from switch number one advertising the new route. Okay, so let's power up switch number three. In our topology, not a whole lot happens here because switch number three is not going to be the new route. It does not have a superior uh, bridge ID. So switch 2 still remains the root. But what's interesting about this particular BPDU, if we take a, a little closer look here, we see that we've got a change. We have the, uh, first of all, this is a BPDU that came from switch number 3. And remember that it's advertising switch number 2 as the root. So that's what the two arrows there. We see the bridge IDs and then the root IDs. But what's also significant here is 
the path cause. Now, at this point in the topology, we don't have a root. So, or I'm sorry, we don't have a loop. So, this particular BPDU, if it's advertised downstream to that host there, has to go all the way around the topology through two bridges or in two ports that have that fast Ethernet cost of 19. So, our path cost here to the root is 38. And we also see that this came from uh, port number three. So this is advertised downstream to that host. Here is our step four. We've got a loop. Do, 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 do. What's really important with any protocol is that not only you understand how to configure it, but if you understand what's happening and why. In this case, we've created a loop by adding a link between switch two and switch three. So what happens? Well, switch two is going to stay the root. Now, whenever you're looking at a spanning tree topology, one of the easiest ways to figure out what's going to happen is take a look at who's going to be the root and then start looking at path costs that are coming from that root. Path costs coming from the root are both going to be zero. On the link between switch one and switch three, that's where we're going to resolve this. And this is why I say sometimes it's a fight, it's an argument between switches, because they're trying to figure out who actually has to block. We examine these, we see that switch 1 and switch 3 are both going to advertise switch 2 as the root, so that's the same. The path cost, back to the root, is both going to be 19. So this argument is going to be resolved based on the bridge ID, the transmit bridge or switch ID. Switch 1 has a higher MAC address, and so it loses this particular argument. When we look at our resolution, we see that the port on switch one had to get blocked. And remember that that was because it lost with a higher bridge ID. And that's really important to remember. So if you understand why this topology got resolved the way it did, and you followed the steps, then you should be in pretty good shape. Next week, we'll spend a little bit more time on improvements to spanning tree and a little bit more on the details in the BPDU. Uh, we are going to do another spanning tree episode here and again we'll do some rapid spanning tree, some of the Cisco improvements and maybe even some of the research that's going on with spanning tree. Uh, I would encourage you to take a look at BruceHartpence.com. All of the resources are out there and all the list of the videos including some configuration updates. Thanks for stopping by and may your packets always reach their destinations.